Alrighty. Number 17 says find the measure of angle SPN. So that would be this angle right here. And we're going to use triangles to solve that. We're going to use alternate interior angles and triangles. Those are our friends. So if I take the 18 from here and I go to the alternate side of the transversal, it's going to land here, alternate interior angles. Um, how can I find this angle right here? <coughs> Sorry. Which property? Who does the consecutive, consecutive angles are supplementary. So I know that N plus S equals 180. So go to your calculator and do 180 minus 30. It's 32. Okay, minus 18 minus 95. So now we know this angle. If we know this angle, Josh, we totally know SPN spin because we have a triangle. Triangle. And then you add them together. You add them together and subtract from 180. Absolutely. 180 minus 18 minus 37. 125. Okay, next one. Number 20. Complete each statement about parallelogram KLMN. Remember, the only way that you could label a parallelogram wrong, you can't start in the wrong spot. You can't even go the wrong way. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise. What you could do wrong would be this. K-L-M-N. That is bad. You cannot jump across the parallelogram. You have to name it in a circular motion for the problems to work, because that is just how we name them. So if I went K, L, I would need to put M and then N. Number 20 says if K, L is 8 and M, N is X squared over 2, then what is X equal? It is Where difficult to make this lesson difficult. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> parallelograms are pretty easy. And the only way we can make it tougher is to put some algebra into it. So we put a little algebra into it because it was just so ridiculously easy. So we know that opposite sides are congruent. We know that 8 equals x squared over 2. The geometry is over. Now we're back in Algebra 1 trying to solve for x. What's the opposite of dividing by 2? Multiply. Multiply by 2. So 16 equals x squared. Josh, what do we do next? Uh, square root. Square root. And then we remember that there are two answers when you square Plus root both minus. sides. There's plus or minus the square root of 16. So, it's, so plus or minus it's plus or minus 4. Oh, no, no, no. Plus 4 and then comma negative 4. That is the same thing. Oh, well, I got the answer right. All right, 22. If angle K is 31 and angle M is 2x squared minus 1, find x. Okay, you only have two choices with angles. They're either equal or they're supplementary. What are these two? Equal, because they're opposite. Opposite angles are congruent. Now we're back to, oh my goodness, we have to do some algebra. Wow. Is this a factoring problem? Yes. When I wait longer, that means you're saying the wrong answer. Oh. <laughs> it is not a factoring problem. I mean, technically you could factor this, but I would not take that route. You do not have to factor this. Raquel, what do you want to do first? Add one to both sides, very good. 32 divide. equals 2x squared. What, divide Isaiah? By two. Divide by 2. So, oh, look what we're back to. 16 equals x squared. Square root, plus or minus, minus 4. You were still confused about the plus or minus 4 thing. Okay. And number 23. Let's clean this up a little bit. Well, I'm using new ones. 23, L is x minus 40. And n is 3x over 4. What are we going to do with them, Josh? We have what? L is x minus 40 and n is 3x over 4. Set them equal because they're opposite. So x minus 40 equals 3x over 4. Um, there's a couple things you can do. You can multiply both sides by 4. Or you can put this over 1 and cross multiply. It's the same, same thing. Yeah, let's do it. It's the same thing. Ready? Let's multiply both sides by 4. 4x four minus 40 equals 3x. What did I do wrong? I did something wrong on purpose. I did not distribute the 4. So you need to do 4 times x and 4 times 40. So instead, this would be 160. Okay? So that would be probably the only way you could mess this up. Subtract 3x from both sides. 
Sound okay? Move the 160, move the 3x. This is 160. I thought it was negative 160, so I was. Okay. 